Welcome back to the Hunter Call the Wild with Lady Legend XO. In today's video, we're gonna do a beginner guide and I'm gonna share with you everything you need to know to get started in this game. We have a lot of information to get through, so let's get to it. But before we do, if you guys haven't done so yet, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the notify bell, and if you enjoy the video or learn anything at all, please leave a like and a comment. Thank you for being here and let's get to it. Alrighty, so we're gonna start out with our beginning inventory. So when you first start out in the game, you get three weapons. The first one is the Ranger 243. This is gonna be the main weapon that you use as you're starting out. It has the best long range capabilities if you are playing with no DLC weapons. The other weapons that come with the game are the Ficasso 357 handgun. Does not come with the scope. You have to level up to unlock the scope. And it also comes with the Caversham Stewart 12 gauge shotgun. Now the nice thing is that with the 243, the soft point bullets are completely free. So when you get started, you want to stock up on those soft points because they're not going to cost you anything. And when you head out, you have everything you need to start shooting away and start leveling up. Now, I would highly recommend that you guys start with at least one DLC if possible, and that would be Weapon Pack 3. It is going to make your life so much easier. You can do it without it, but I wouldn't recommend it. The 30 odd 6 is an excellent weapon. It's going to drop animals a lot faster than the 243. So then, our next mission is to unlock your map so that you can get around and start to really hunt. So head over to your storage locker and grab yourself a four-wheeler and then you want to mark where your lookouts and your outposts are on the map and head there on the four-wheeler. I would recommend using one of these paths or roads because then you don't have to contend with trees and rocks and things that are going to slow you down and make your trip a lot harder. So that's what I would recommend doing. And when you open up the Outlook Towers, what that's going to do is it's going to give you a nice big circle of light on your map and that allows you to actually see where your outposts are. So here we are unlocking an outpost. All your green indicators there, that means they have not been unlocked and need to be unlocked. And I almost forgot, I wanted to mention to you guys that the seven millimeter is an awesome weapon. It is what you want to save up for, especially if you don't have any DLC weapons. And the objective when you first start is to get to level 60. I would call that a beginner objective. It is really important. You're gonna start out at level one and with no cash. So you need to earn money and XP to level up. And so the best way to level up is to complete missions, killing and harvesting animals, and unlocking outposts and lookout towers and things like that, that gives you XP. So moving on to missions, missions are an awesome way for you to learn this game. The purpose of them is to give you a task. When you complete it, you're going to get cash and XP and they are put there for you to learn. It takes you all around the map, gets you shooting different animals. I do highly recommend that you do try out the missions. They are a great way to level up. Okay, so now we're going to look at the very bottom right hand corner of the screen. And here you're going to find a whole bunch of indicators. The first one we're going to look at is your compass. So this circle here is your compass and the green V is your wind indicator. And the open part of the V is where your wind is blowing. So if you have that facing towards any animals within 200 meters, those animals are gonna spook likely. So you really need to pay attention to that. So the first number you see here, the number five, is how many bullets are currently in the chamber. Then the next number, 420, ha ha. That's how many bullets are in our inventory, not including those five. And the next icon, that's your active perks indicator. That one there. And I will talk a little bit about skills and perks a little bit later in the video and I will also do a full video on skills and perks because that is very important when you're getting started. And then the heart there, that is your heart rate monitor. So guys, in June I actually reset my account. I had been at level 60 for three years and the reason I reset it is because my latent map was not spawning animals. And so this is actual footage of me starting my game over. And as you can see, <laughs> I'm having a hard time. If you look at the heart indicator in the bottom right hand corner, my heart rate's going out of control. And that's because I am holding my breath 
When you're lining up a shot on an animal, you can hold your breath for just a few seconds. It will give you a steadier shot, but that's gonna really increase your heart rate. And you really need to pay attention to how long you're holding your breath, because if you hold it for too long, what's gonna happen? Yeah, I'm having a hard time here, guys. I really am very wobbly. If you hold your breath for too long, what's gonna happen is eventually you're gonna run out of breath and your gun's gonna fly up in the air, could ruin your shot. The other thing that increases your heart rate is running. So those are things you need to pay attention to. You always want to catch your breath before taking a shot so that you can have the breath control to hold your breath while you're taking the shot and take a steady shot. That's what you're looking for. So the eyeball there beside the heart, that is your visibility icon. And that's gonna change as you move. You do really need to pay attention to that because that is how well animals can see you. So when you have a full circle, so I have the eyeball right now. So there's the full circle. That means I am fully visible. There it is. And when I stop, it goes to the smaller eyeball. I am still visible, but not quite as visible as the full circle. So when I run, I always have the full circle. I'm fully visible. Then I'm going to crouch. So then I have the line and the half circle. I am half visible. Half my body is visible to animals. And when I lay prone, I have the line. That means I am invisible up to a certain distance. And when you go into a tree and you are fully invisible, and I'll show you that in just a sec, animals can't see you at all until they basically walk right up on you. And that is the most hidden that you can be. So when I stand in the edge and I am in the branches, I am safe here for animals until they get to about, I'd say 25 meters, then they may be able to see you. So I'm not hidden here, and when I crouch, I am. And when I move further in, there, now I'm totally invisible. So now you have a faded out line. So those are all your indicators. And generally, you do have to crouch when you're in a tree to become invisible. You can't generally stand up straight. So those are all good things to pay attention to. And then the icon beside the visibility indicator is your noise indicator and you need to pay very close attention because spooking animals off is probably the number one way that animals disappear. So pay attention to the noise indicator as I move around. As I jump there, you get a red bar. That is what's gonna spook animals away. You're gonna get the red bar from running, and uh, that is not what you want. I do do a lot of running in this game, but generally I only run when I'm trying to get to a destination and then I slow down about 150 meters from my destination. Generally, that is a lake or a water source. I do like to hunt animals in their drink zones. But yeah, as you go prone, you'll notice that I am pretty quiet. That is the quietest that you can be, aside from being perfectly still. So pay attention to the noise that you're making. So now it's time to actually hunt. Yay! So when I'm ready to hunt, I run my way over to a water source. You guys should always be hunting around water. That is where you're going to find lots of animals. And I always have my binoculars out. Your binoculars are your very best friend. You don't want to be running around the map with a rifle in your hand. You want to have your binoculars out and you want to be spotting everywhere. Now you do start the game with a lower level of binoculars and you do want to upgrade to the apex view as soon as you can. They are very important and they are much better than your starter binoculars, but they will do for now. So we have found some black tail here. So I am hiding in the tree here. I'm completely invisible as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. And we're going to use our 243 and we're going to take a shot. So when you are shooting, you don't want to stand up straight. This is my sway on my gun standing up straight. Now I am at level 60, so you're going to have a lot more sway when you start the game. Your gun is going to get steadier as you go and build skill and perk points, but you see how it's so much steadier when I'm prone? Going prone will give you the steadiest shot possible. Sometimes you can't see when you're prone though. So I am crouching and I'm going to hold my breath and take my shot. And that looks good. And that there, that is vital blood. That is what you want. That tells you that you got a vital organ. So that's awesome. So then you want to track the animal. You want to follow the blood and it will lead you to your kill. So there he is there. He didn't get too far. And this is our trophy capture. 
This card has all kinds of information in it for you. So if you look in the top left hand corner, we have lots of information here. We have a black tailed deer, which is a class four animal. So then you can go and look up which weapons you can use on a class four animal. It also tells you the gender, weight, fur type, tracking distance, difficulty, trophy type, and trophy organs. And then in the bottom left hand corner, you can pull up your harvest check criteria and you must pass all four of these requirements in order for you to get full score on your animal. So in order for you to pass the harvest check, you must use the proper ammunition and therefore the proper gun for that animal. You can only shoot every animal twice maximum. You must keep your trophy organs intact. So what that means is if you are shooting a deer and its trophy organs or antlers, you cannot shoot that animal in the head and you must hit at least one vital organ. And our vital organs would be the lungs, the liver, the neck, and the heart. Those are your best shots. Those will all give you a vital and you will pass the harvest check. And the one exception is that you do not need a vital on birds. At the start, I would recommend taking broadside shots. That's probably your best bet to hit an organ. So I think we have another black tail here we are going to take a shot on. So I am hidden well enough here, not completely, but I am hidden. I keep moving back, but this tree is not going to hide me. Not all trees are created equally. Some, you can get in some trees, especially in Savannah, and they won't hide you at all. But then you get to Layton and they're all great. So it all depends on where you are and what kind of trees you're hiding in or trying to hide in. So we have a level three here. You will not have all these, all the information in the top right hand corner that I have that you're looking at when you start your game. Your skills and perks will unlock that and let you have that information later on as you play and level up. So we have a silver black tail deer and the score here, 123.2, that is his score. That is his trophy rating. We did manage to get all the four requirements for the harvest check, so we got full score on him, and he is a silver. And we shot him in the left lung, says it here on the right-hand side, and it tells you which weapons, what ammunition, how far away the shot was, and you get a weapon score, and that weapon score, as you build, it will unlock more and more weapons and gear for you. So that's why your weapon score is important. And you'll notice here that the shot barely penetrated and that's because it's a soft point bullet. Soft points are good at expansion and polymer tips are good at penetration. So you wanna get polymer tips as soon as you can because those soft points just don't do as good a job. So now we're gonna talk about need zones and I'm just gonna give you the basics of it. I will do a full video on need zones because there is a lot to them. But for right now, need zones are basically where and when you're gonna find your animals doing what they need to do. And that would be rest, drink, or feed. And there are two ways to discover a need zone. That is one right there. So you just go on top of it and press X, that adds it to your map. Or if you spot an animal with your binoculars that's in its zone, that will add the zone to your map. So that there is single tier hunting pressure. And the first thing that tells you is that your animal has died. So if you open up your map and you don't see purple, your animal's still running around. The second thing it tells you is where you shot that animal. So if you put your marker right in the middle of the purple, you should find the vital blood or the blood, if you didn't get a vital shot, where you shot the animal and you can then track it to the body. So it is very, very helpful. So that's single tier. That means I've just killed one animal with that purple. So I'm just gonna run into my lodge here and I'm gonna change the time. You can change the time at any of your outposts or any tent. And I'm gonna go over to this lake and I'm gonna show you why I changed the time. All right, so I am looking for ducks and I have a need zone here. So I've changed the time to 1147. I have a need zone here for mallards that starts at 1130. So I'm just showing you here that when I changed the time, I had no ducks here. There is not a single duck on this lake right now. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit. Let's check this zone. So it says we have mallards 1130 to 1330. 
So now it is almost one o'clock and I have ducks here. And that's why need zones are so great. They tell you where and when to find that animal. So I'm gonna take a few ducks down here just to show you the full extent of hunting pressure. So that is three tier hunting pressure with killing three animals my need zone is still intact it's still there that is the most that you can kill three animals before you delete your need zone when you kill that fourth animal look at that my need zone is now gone so be very careful to only kill three animals within a need zone but there is a workaround for that if you hunt using a tripod or a tree stand or any hunting structure, you can then kill 16 animals before you delete your need zones. So just be careful and keep that in mind. If you do end up deleting your need zones, those animals are not gone off your map. That need zone will appear somewhere else on your map. Not to worry, it's just not gonna appear in this particular spot. And the tripods and tree stands, you'll find them in a DLC. As you receive cash and XP, you will level up in the game. And for every level at the beginning, you will receive either a skill or a perk point and they will alternate. So you will receive a perk and then a skill and then a perk and so on until you reach level 38. And then you will get one every three levels until you hit 60. So I will do a full video on skills and perks and I will do that very soon for you guys. But for today's video, I'm just going to give you the basics because there is a lot of information in there. We are in stalker skills and in this tree, these are my five most important skills. Locate tracks, track knowledge, soft feet, improvise blind, and disturb vegetation. Now, sometimes you have to pick a skill or a perk that you don't necessarily want just to open up the next tier and that's okay, but those are the ones that you want. Now we're in ambusher. And the two most important here are spotting knowledge and sight spotting. So those are the ones you want to get as soon as you possibly can. Now perk points are broken down into four weapons categories. And basically they are there to power up whichever weapons you like to use. So if you love to bow hunt, you can put a bunch of your perk points into bow hunting. You can just customize your character the way you like to play the game. Now, some of the perks in here, even though they're under a certain category, they apply to all of the weapons. So say you might find a particular skill in bow hunting, but it applies to every weapon. So those are awesome and just be aware of that. I will go into far greater detail on skills and perks in a separate video, but for right now, that is all we're gonna get into. So on the left hand side, one of your options is going to be for a codex and your codex has a wealth of information in there. I highly recommend you go through it. If you go under wildlife, it's going to give you information on every single species in the game. It's going to tell you their behavior, their habits, everything you need to know about them when they're active, what weapon class they are, how difficult they are. It's all in there, guys. So go through there and familiarize yourself with the codex. It is an awesome resource for you. Also in the codex, you'll find a tutorial log and all kinds of terms are explained in there. There's just a wealth of information in there. And I don't remember that being there when I started. It might have been and I just didn't access it. I didn't know it was there and I didn't look around for it. So please guys go in there and read through the codex. Lots of good information to help you get started in there. Also in your codex, you will find your hunting profile, and that gives you all of your numbers. This is my codex since I restarted in June. You can also see information on all the different reserves. The leaderboards are in there and you have a hunting log. So you can see your history of your trophies. You can go in and see your latest harvest. I believe the screen shows your last 25 kills. So make sure you familiarize yourself with the codex. So now I'm gonna quickly show you all eight of our gorgeous reserves. We're gonna start with Leighton Lakes, which is our home base. Here in Leighton, you're gonna find species such as whitetail, blacktail, moose, black bear, coyotes, and more. It can be sometimes harder to find animals in Leighton than other maps, but still just a lot of fun to hunt. Hirschfelden is an absolutely stunningly beautiful map. 
You're gonna find animals such as Euro bison, fallow deer, roe deer, wild boar, and more. It can be a tougher map to hunt because there aren't as many animals here, but still a very fun map to hunt. And this is where you hunt geese, so there's that. <laughs> now we have Medved. Medved is our winter map. You're gonna find animals such as reindeer, black bear, musk deer, wild boar, and more here. With it being a winter map, it can give you a little bit of an eerie feeling, especially at night, but it is a lot of fun to hunt. I just love hunting for reindeer. <laughs> and then we have Savannah, and Savannah is a super popular map. Part of the reason for that is there are just a pile of animals here, and you're gonna find species such as wildebeest, gemsbok, lions, cape buffalo, and more. We are now in Parquet Fernando, and in Parquet, you're gonna find species such as black buck, axis deer, puma, red deer, and more. It is a very pretty map and a lot of fun to hunt. It can be a little thick around the lake edges, but that just gives you more of a challenge, right? And here we have a level five axis deer. And that's the end of him. And now we are moving on to Yukon Valley. Yukon is absolutely beautiful. You're gonna find species here such as grizzly bears, caribou, gray wolves, red fox, and more. We have a really nice herd of caribou here with some grizzly bears in the background. And caribou are a lot of fun to hunt. And now we are in Quatros Colinas. And Quatros is one of our newer maps. Simply absolutely stunning. Look at the footage. Oh my goodness. And of course, we have piles of red deer here. Red deer are one of my favorite species, so that is one of my favorite maps. You're also going to find species here such as Iberian wolves, Iberian mouflon, all four species of ibex, and more. Look at that red deer. I just love the level sevens, they're just so beautiful. And last, but definitely not least, we have Silver Ridge Peaks, and look how gorgeous they've made this map. They did just an amazing job. This map just came out this last summer, and you're gonna find species here, such as mountain goats, pronghorn, mountain lions, bighorn sheep, black bears, and more. And this map is just jam-packed with animals. There are animals everywhere, so it is a blast to hunt. And I wanted to mention that if you do not own all of the map DLCs, you can still play on them in multiplayer as long as someone on the map does own the map. So you can try out all the different maps in multiplayer and choose which one you would like first if you wish. That is an option for you. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about something that often gets glossed over in a beginner guide, and that is trophy hunting. And I would love for you guys to be aware of what a top level animal is right from the beginning so that you can trophy hunt as you level up. This is a level nine red deer. This is a potential diamond. And a diamond is the top level animal in the game. There are not many of them, they are trophies, and they're very hard to find, and they're a real treat when you find them. And so learning what your top level animals are is really important. Now in my Discord, you guys are welcome to join it. I have all kinds of reference charts for this game, and I also have a top level chart. So that is a diamond, very cool. So animals generally go to either level 3, level 5, or level 9. All of your predators go to level 9, plus there are some others, like red deer, that go to level 9. And so this is my Discord here. It's a free app you can download. And so every time I put a hotspot map in a video, I do post it to my Discord for you guys. And I also have the animal classifications chart in here. This is a really great reference chart. It shows you all the animals in the game and what class they are. And once you know what class they are, then you can figure out which weapons you are allowed to use on them. Also shows you the minimum trophy rating for 
silver, gold, and diamond. And now this is your weapons classifications chart. This chart tells you which ammunition you can use on which class of animal. And so basically that tells you which guns you're allowed to use on every species in the game so that you get integrity and get your full score. I also have in the Discord the need zone charts. So when you look at that, you can see when whatever species you want to hunt, when they're drinking, when they're feeding, and so on. And then I have in here, as I mentioned, your max levels chart. This is important for you to be able to trophy hunt. So have a good look at this and learn what your maximum level animal is. So if you do find it, you can make sure to take a good shot on it. And that brings us to the end of our beginner guide. I really hope you guys learn lots and I hope that'll give you an awesome start to this awesome game. If you did enjoy this video or learn anything at all, please press that like button. And if you haven't done so yet, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys can join us for more videos. We have lots of awesome content coming up. Until next time, you take care. We'll see you soon.